So let's take a look at how we're going to graph these lines. Now they all start with y equals, and then we've got something x and a number. So just a reminder, this is called slope intercept form. So this refers to our slope. I'm going to put s for slope. Normally we use m, but just s for slope, and then this is going to be your intercept. Now we have to look at the sign that goes with that as well. Now when it comes to plotting these two things, normally I plot the intercept first. Now the intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. So find positive 1 on the y-axis, and that's your first point. Now to do the slope, we're going to use rise over run. Now you can see that this is not a fraction, so we're going to write 2 as 2 over 1. 2 divided by 1 is 2, so I haven't changed the number at all, but now I have a fraction. So the 2 tells me I'm going to rise 2 squares, and then I'm going to run 1 square. And the run always has to go to the right as well. So my next point is this point here. So let me put that point back. And then I can do the same thing. I can rise 2, and I can run 1. Now with a ruler, what you can do is then you can join these points up. And that's going to be the equation of your line. Now we should be able to do that for most questions that start with y equals. So negative 2 for this one is going to be our y-intercept. So we go down to negative 2 on the y-axis. Same problem with the slope. It says 3, but we need to make rise over run. So rise 3 over 1. And then we can rise 3 squares, run 1 square. Rise 3 squares, run 1 square. And then I run out of space. So I'm just going to go ahead and oops, join that up. And there's your equation for numbers 1 and 2. Now carrying on with that idea, uh, same thing to begin with, we're going to plot our y-intercept. This time we do have a fraction, 1 over 2, so we're going to rise 1 square, run 2 square. Rise 1 square, run 2 square. And then once we've got a few points, we can go ahead and join those up using a ruler. And there's our first one. Uh, for number 4, 2 two thirds of x minus 2, so we're going to start with negative 2, our y-intercept. And then the slope, 2 over 3, so we have a rise of 2 squares, and then a run of 3 squares. Rise of 2 squares, run of 3 squares, just a little off the grid there. So I'm going to join those two points up. And obviously a little easier to do if you have a ruler. So having a fraction for a slope actually makes the question easier rather than more difficult, as you might first think. Now we're going to look at some questions with negative slopes. Same idea, first of all, y-intercept is going to be 1. Um, slope rise over run, but there's no number there, so we're going to put divide by 1. So then we can say a rise of negative 2. So negative 2 actually says rather than going up, we're actually going to go down. So we're going to go down 2 squares, across 1 square. Down 2, across 1. Down 2, across 1. And then once I've done that, I can join these points up to give me my equation. Uh, number 6, same thing, starts at 4. Make it into a fraction, so negative 3 over 1. So I'm going to go down 3 squares, across 1 square, down 3 squares, across 1 square, and so on. And then when I join this up for the line, it's going to look something like that. So with negative slopes, just make sure that you actually go the correct direction. Remember to count downwards for rise over run. Now for 7 and 8, we've got two very special cases. Um, notice that this one starts with y equals, but there's no x's here, it's just a number. So this could actually be 0x minus 2. The number 8 is totally different, it doesn't even start with y equals. In fact, there is no y in this equation. Now, y equals a number and x equals a number are two special cases. So one, the, one, the y equals negative 2 means all the y coordinates are negative 2, which is actually this line here. If you were to look at these coordinates, this is 0, negative 2, 1, negative 2, 2, negative 2, 3, negative 2, and so on. Now, a lot of people get this confused because, as you can see here, the y-axis actually goes vertical, but y equals a number goes horizontal. So you've got to be very careful with that. And the same idea when you do x equals 4. The x-axis goes this way, but x equals 4 does not go through 4 in that direction because that would be y equals 4. So we've got to remember to go in the opposite direction. So although the x-axis is horizontal, x equals 4 is a vertical line going through 4 on the x-axis. So y equals a number, x equals a number, that's going to be your horizontal and vertical lines. Now this time when we come to look at the slope, there's actually not a number in front of the x. The other one we saw like 2x, so we knew it was a slope of 2. This one doesn't even have a number, so we need to know for that 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 means that it's 1x. And actually the same for this one, there's no number here, so I'm going to add a 1. Now for slope, we want to make it into a fraction, rise over run, so same thing. We're going to divide by 1. 
and then we can go ahead and draw this. So plus 3 tells us it goes through 3 on the y-axis. Then we're going to go up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, and do it as many times as we need to go ahead and draw in that line. And one for the negative one, well, we're going to start at plus 2 first of all, but this time we're going to go down 1 across 1, so down 1 across 1, down 1 across 1, down 1 across 1, and so on. And then when we join those up, we should end up with that one. So if there's no number in front of the x, simply put a 1, um, and then go ahead and make it into a fraction if necessary, and then go ahead and draw the graph. Now this is a combination of a couple of earlier questions. Uh, what happens if we have a fraction, but also what happens if we have a negative fraction? So first of all, looking at the y-intercept here, so plus 2, and then I'm going to go down 1 across 2. And it's actually easier with it being a fraction, so down 1 across 2, down 1 across 2. And then once I've got a few points, I should be able to go ahead and draw the line in. Same with 12, this time it starts at negative 4, so I'm going to go to negative 4 on my y-axis. And this one says we're going to go down 1 across 3. And I've run out of room on this graph, so I'm just going to go ahead and draw it up using a ruler. So these are actually easier when there is fractions, because we already know what the rise and the run part is going to look like. So now looking at positive fractions. So positive 1 for my intercept. Uh, up 2 across 3, rise 2, run 3, rise 2, run 3, just off the edge of the graph there. So I'm just going to go ahead and join this up. And that's number 13. Now number 14 is slightly different. Notice on this one we've got the plus 1, but on this one we don't have plus anything or subtract anything. So what that actually means is technically we're adding 0 on here. So adding 0 doesn't do anything, which is why it's not there. So you need to remember for graphs that just have the number of x, that the y-intercept is just 3 over 2. Is, sorry, it's just 0. Now the slope is 3 over 2, so that's a rise of 3 row 2, rise of 3, row 2, which takes me just off the graph. So I'm going to stop at that point, and we're just going to go ahead and join those up. So a couple of things to watch out for. If there's no number in front of the x, put 1x, and if there's no number at the end after the x, then just put plus 0. Just a few added extra questions with slightly more complicated fractions, but no more difficult actually. Plus 3 means we're going to start at 3, down 2 across 3, down 2 across 3, if we did it once more, we'd be off the grid, so we're just going to go ahead and join those up. And there's our graph, pretty easy to do. Uh, we've got plus 2 at the end here, so it means we're going to start 2 on the y-axis. Down 3 across 4, so down 3 across 4. Once we've got our first two points, we can go... Uh, I can go ahead and join those up with a line. There we go, that's what I was trying to do. So no more complicated, actually, even if we have uh, negative fractions. And sometimes the easy questions are the ones that cause problems. This one doesn't have very much written at all. Um, but there's no number on the end here, so we know that that's plus 0. There's no number here either, which means this is negative 1x. And then to make it into a fraction, we also need to divide by 1. So we have to do, have to do quite a few steps on this one when they give us quite a simple equation. So it starts at 0, down 1 across 1, down 1 across 1, down 1 across 1, and so on. And then we can go ahead and join these points up. Actually, 18 is slightly easier um, because we do have a top number here, so we just need to divide it by 1. And with there being no number on the end, we're going to put plus 0. So we're going to start at the origin at 0, and this time down 2 across 1, down 2 across 1, and so on. Then we can go ahead and join those points up. So that's quite a good um, coverage of all the different types of uh, linear graphs that you could be asked to draw. A few more with fractions. So it starts at plus 2, and then down 3 across 2, down 3 across 2, down 3 across 2, and then go ahead and join them up. And as you can see, once you've got the idea for these, you can do them fairly quickly. Number's missing at the end here, so we're going to put plus 0, so we're going to start at 0, down 4 this time across 3, and go ahead and join that up. So super quick once you got used to this idea, so one that's definitely worth learning. Now sometimes they write their fractions in different ways, so I thought this one was worth looking at. x over 5, remember x means 
1x. So actually the rise over run here is 1 over 5. So we start at negative 3, rise of 1, run of 5, and then we can go ahead and join these up. Same idea with this one. Um, there's no number here for this one, so it must be a 1, 1x. One so we've got negative 1 over 4 for our slope. First of all, we need to start at plus 3, though, in the intercepts. So we go down 1, across 4, and then we can go ahead and join this up as well. So no more complicated if it's written like that.